This video is for pharmacy staff who prepare oncology products. The drugs used to fight cancer are toxic products called antineoplastics. They are identified with this symbol. It is important to remember that antineoplastics are cytotoxic agents. An agent is considered cytotoxic if it is potentially mutagenic, oncogenic, or teratogenic. It is therefore critical that anyone who handles these drugs be adequately protected and use safe procedures. We assume that you have already mastered the principles and procedures for handling sterile products. Such procedures are essential in protecting patients from the risk of contamination. We are now going to look at policies and procedures specific to antineoplastic products. This video demonstrates six procedures. Procedure for diluting a powder using a chemotherapy dispensing pin with hydrophobic filter. Procedure for withdrawing a solution using a chemotherapy dispensing pin with hydrophobic filter. Procedure for attaching a tubing. Procedure for reconstituting a powder in a vented vial with a hydrophobic filter. Procedure for reconstituting a powder using negative pressure. Procedure for withdrawing a solution using negative pressure. But first, a reminder of the potential routes of exposure and contamination by antineoplastic products to the handler. Inhalation of particles or aerosols. Accidental ingestion. Self-inoculation by an accidental needle stick. Skin contact. Antineoplastics and other cytotoxic products must be handled in a room designated for this purpose only. It is imperative that all necessary safety measures be observed in this room. By applying the recommendations described in this video, we will see how this is accomplished. A Class II Vertical Laminar Airflow Biological Safety Cabinet that meets required standards is necessary for handling antineoplastic products. The cabinet must be in operation continuously, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Ideally, the cabinet should be a type B2 or total exhaust cabinet from which 100% of the filtered air is exhausted to the outside of the building. The cabinet must be certified by a qualified technician when installed or repaired and ideally recertified every six months. When preparing antineoplastic drugs, you must use sterile equipment. You must always wear protective clothing in the room designated for the handling of these products. Wear a disposable, back-closing, lint-free, long-sleeved gown with tight-fitting cuffs that is water-repellent in the front. Before placing your hands in the cabinet, don powder-free sterile surgical latex gloves. For your protection, double gloving is required. The inner glove is tucked under the cuff of your gown and the outer glove is placed over the cuff. Discard gloves at once if they are punctured, torn or contaminated. All gloves must be changed after 30 to 60 minutes of continuous work with antineoplastic products. We also recommend that you wear a surgical mask at all times during the handling to prevent any contamination of the products. Finally, you must never remove contaminated objects, clothing or material from the room to avoid transporting antineoplastic particles outside the room. For this reason as well, you must wash your hands thoroughly after all handling is completed.
When cleaning the biological safety cabinet, wear a respirator mask with a high efficiency filter, an N100 respirator mask for example, to protect yourself from antineoplastic particles that might be present in the cabinet. You must also wear the respirator mask when cleaning up drug spills or decontaminating the cabinet. Always start by cleaning the glass shield and then proceed in the order demonstrated here. It is important to wipe all surfaces with sterile gauze soaked with 70% isopropyl alcohol at the beginning and the end of day. Clean the work surface regularly and whenever a spill occurs. The cabinet is cleaned laterally using overlapping strokes and beginning closest to the HEPA filter. In addition to the daily cleanings, the cabinet must be thoroughly decontaminated once weekly, first cleaning with a detergent, then rinsing well with sterile water for irrigation, and lastly, wiping with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Begin the decontamination by cleaning the underside of the work surface, and then continue with the cabinet as per the daily procedures. After the daily cleaning, place a disposable plastic-backed absorbent cloth on the work surface. Before beginning any handling, disinfect a sharps container and a bottle of 70% isopropyl alcohol and place them in the cabinet. Procedure for diluting a powder using a chemotherapy dispensing pin with hydrophobic filter. Sit down at the cabinet. Arrange the syringes in the cabinet, taking care not to disrupt the laminar flow with your hands. Push in the plunger to expel the air from the syringe and to loosen the plunger. The procedure begins by drawing the diluent. Disinfect the rubber stopper of the vial of diluent with an alcohol swab. The alcohol must be in contact with the rubber stopper for at least 30 seconds. Draw in a volume of air equivalent to the amount of diluent that will be drawn into the syringe. Withdraw the diluent using the positive pressure technique, adjusting the withdrawal angle for the vertical hood. Have the pharmacist check the quality and volume of diluent used. Depending on the hospital, this check may be performed at another time. Loosen the antineoplastic powder and then disinfect the stopper. Unwrap the chemotherapy dispensing pin.
Grasp the dispensing pin by the flanges. Push the pin into the rubber stopper without turning to minimize the risk of contaminating the solution with rubber particles. Caution! The pin must be pushed in completely so as not to contaminate the solution by pushing the pin in further later on. Place an alcohol swab at the back of the work area. Unscrew the dispensing pin cap and place it on the swab, taking care not to contaminate the inside of the cap. Remove the needle from the diluent syringe. Attach the syringe to the dispensing pin, holding the pin upright by the flanges. Hold the vial upright on the work surface to keep it stable and inject the diluent slowly so as not to wet the filter. Unscrew the syringe and discard it. Place the cap back onto the dispensing pin, taking care not to contaminate it, and close it tightly to prevent leaks. Agitate the vial in a circular motion, taking care not to wet the filter. Procedure for withdrawing a solution using a chemotherapy dispensing pin with hydrophobic filter. Before withdrawing, check that the powder has completely dissolved. The solution should not contain any foam or undissolved particles. Attach the syringe to the dispensing pin Aligning the graduations so you can read them as you withdraw the solution. Invert the vial syringe assembly, holding it from the bottom with all your fingers. Keep the assembly at a 70 degree angle with the filter facing upward throughout this step of the procedure. Draw up the desired amount of fluid from the vial. Withdraw enough fluid to fill the air bubble space and the hub of the needle with fluid. Caution, do not push fluid back into the vial while the vial syringe assembly is upside down. Otherwise